Hey friends, Lissa here for a special video. I've got Grant Campbell here with me Hi. from Raw Aussie Athlete. Thank you very much for yeah. doing this little interview. My pleasure. We're enjoying the Lake Okanagan right it's before the so Canada Fruit here. Fest. He's been swimming a lot. It's <laughs> incredible. Doing meditation groups, but I'm loving it. yeah, we wanted to do a quick video about um, the emotional aspect mm -hmm. of eating raw and a little bit of the struggle. So we want to share that with you in this video. So you've been raw for 12 years? Yeah, 12 and a half years, yep. Mm -hmm. And you've experienced some interesting stuff along the journey. I sure have. <laughs> yeah, what a journey. Yeah, so would you share a little bit about that with Yeah, everyone? Um, you know, I went raw um, yeah, back in November 2005 and thought I was just changing my diet, but there was so much more to it. Mm. There was all these like um, emotional things came up. Um, uh, I worked at IBM for 15 years and, and the last few years of that I, I was realizing that it wasn't emotionally, like it wasn't a fulfilling mm -hmm. career. I would do jobs just for money and then not really think about them once I'd finished them and, and my life had to be about more than that and mm -hmm. I started feeling a lack of fulfillment from that and I would find myself just like get, just going late at night into after I'd been gone raw like but just going and binging on like mm. fried vegan street food and mm -hmm. like it was a form of self-harm um, yeah. because I wasn't happy inside I wasn't making choices that 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 um, where my like my choices weren't aligned with kind of my values and I didn't really understand mm. my values at that time either so yeah. I had to go on this whole journey to really understand myself and find myself and, and I had the similar issues with um, with relationships like mm -hmm. just unfulfilling relationship with my partner and and um, just yeah just really kind of feeling stuck not knowing what to do about things and, and you know with children as well and like it was hard to not see the, the difference between your relationship with the partner and the relationship with children and um, I don't know it's just like yeah just it was kind of scary things struggles. I didn't know yeah. how to handle all this stuff or what to do about it or even that there really was problems at first mm -hmm. I was like is it me is it her is it is it yeah. something like and all this sort of stuff so and I had this strong sense of loyalty as well that what kind of played against me, mm -hmm. where I would just like stick things out. Mm, yeah. You know? I yeah. guess that makes me a better ultra marathon runner, maybe. But, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So there was challenges there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you find solutions to those issues? Like you, you had to find mm -hmm. what your purpose was or what felt meaningful for you. How did you? go about finding that yeah I mean at the end of the day um, I got to a point at IBM where they, they kind of made it easy for me because they didn't mm. approve some leave um, oh, that I'd okay. applied for and I followed all the right processes everyone approved leave and then some manager four levels up didn't approve it that I didn't even know who, who that was and the fact that they were just um, they were treating me not like a person and yeah, that they didn't really care about me I was just I was mm -hmm. just making money for them yeah and so that made it really easy for me to just walk away <laughs> yeah just say bye <laughs> and, and it was a lot of money and I and and I don't earn that much money now like I probably earn like a quarter of what I used to earn then now mm -hmm. but um, but I'm you can't put a price on being happy yeah. and, and I earn enough money to live the, the beautiful life that I live where I do everything that I want to do mm -hmm. So it's like, well, why would you want more money? You know, it's yeah, just, totally. And why would you throw away so many hours of your, of your awesome life to earn money for, that, you, that you don't need? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, you just live on what you need. Yeah. And so I, I, I left IBM, um, kind of just cold turkey, and, and didn't really have a strategy for how to make money. I thought I would probably start uh, doing IT contracting, mm -hmm. and, and where I can make more money per hour, and then just work maybe six months of the year, and then take the rest of the time to study something like lifestyle coaching or something to get in something yes. that I, like where I where it was fulfilling and I was helping people to improve their lives and like be you know live a better live 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 fulfilling lives themselves because mm -hmm. you know that being of service to others is something I realized was a rewarding. Something I think I for most of us are yeah, yeah. we all find that. Um, fulfilling to teach and to absolutely yeah. yeah definitely being of service is a huge thing mm -hmm. and we all have that need in common I think we can do it in so many different ways yeah um, so I, I retrained as a lifestyle coach and um, and and actually um, I started working for Doug Graham back mm. then mm -hmm. and did that for like eight years pretty <laughs> solid and became the director of education for food and sport and worked at all these retreats for in, you know fasting retreats and all these other events and it was, it was really incredible experiences and I, I learned so much and grew so much and I was, I've been at all the fruit festivals and all that for so many years mm -hmm. um, and so that that all made it easier yeah but 
um, until I resolved those issues with my career and, and my um, relationship issues, mm -hmm. I would still, even in those environments, like I'd be, it's easy to stay raw in all those environments, but when I'd go back home, yeah. boom, I'd be like into Subway to buy a veggie sub or something, or yeah. into like an Indian fast food mm -hmm. place and buy the veggie samosa or, or whatever, whatever it was, the, the go-to kind of yeah the the coping mechanism foods the, the yeah. what we call comfort foods mm -hmm. but it was just escapism and um and it ate away my integrity and i you know i'd feel shame and i wouldn't want to share yeah. it with people and i wouldn't talk about it at festivals and 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 i'd go to a festival and i might be like a little bit puffed up and it's like hoping nobody notices something mm. and, and all stuff like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um and that was just all a consequence of not living an open a totally open yeah. life and keeping things like keeping secrets and stuff and now like I'm totally open well, thank about you for everything. Sharing. So. Yeah, and it's really hard for us because we are kind of like like a face of raw vegan, right? Mm -hmm. So people mm -hmm. look up to us and they watch us yeah. and they I don't want to say they judge, but they kind of they're like, oh, he looks puffy, you know, or whatever. So we yeah. don't want to. And then when we hide it, then we're not showing our true yeah, authenticity. Yeah, and then you can't be authentic. Yeah. And then I noticed yeah. I couldn't look people in the eye properly oh, and things yeah. like that. And it's like when. Yeah. Like I value my health so much, but I also mm -hmm. value my integrity yeah. so much. I won't compromise my integrity for anything now. Yeah. Like it's just so important, um, and I know what it felt like when I did, and mm -hmm. it's not good. Plus, when you are, you know, being vulnerable in that state mm -hmm. of sharing that, people can relate to you so much more because Absolutely. they're like, "Oh my gosh, you're yeah. you okay? So you're not perfect, you know? You're yeah, you're being real, being like, real, and people." really appreciate that yeah yeah and you're talking to someone not like a preacher but like yeah. like a peer or a real person and, and people yeah. appreciate being acknowledged mm -hmm. as, as a real person exactly and being able to relate totally. yeah, for sure so how do you find how were you what were your solutions like wh yeah. what did you do what do you do to stay raw basically um i mean i i did, I did or if you feel like you're gonna fall off you yeah. know or <laughs> go to subway and get that sub <laughs> yeah i mean basically um i did a lot of soul searching and I did that in many ways um, like there was you know I read books by you know Eckhart Tolle, mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle like the power of now things like that that got mm -hmm. me thinking about and, um, and other things that helped me to get rid of negative self-talk and, and it was just like kind of growing awareness of things and I'd, once I'd become aware of something then I could do something about it and then problem mm -hmm. solved uh, I did a I did a 29 day water fast uh, in 2008 with mm -hmm. Doug Graham which was just absolutely amazing um, and I feel like just through resting and doing nothing during that period, yeah. uh, I my body's agenda kind of was able to be expressed without any distraction or interruption of, of regular yeah. life. Mm -hmm. You're not eating food, using energy to digest food, and so all this nerve energy from sleeping more is available more mm -hmm. for healing your body, or or for more more importantly for me was like conducting like, like um, just processing thoughts and, and yeah. deep things like the stuff that kind of maybe gets processed when you're dreaming mm -hmm. but um, yeah mm -hmm. I just got to process a lot of things I'd just wake up in the middle of the night with ideas and thoughts got to know my values pretty clearly um, what was really important to me in life and so I came out of the water fast knowing myself a lot better but there's still more yeah to grow. there's always and, work <laughs> and, and the raw community um, is just uh, so like open and mm -hmm. just generally and um, everyone like, genuinely cares about each other, so there's genuine interest, and yeah. uh, everyone kind of listens to each other and, and, and gets mm -hmm. the chance to be heard. And uh, it's just a really beautiful environment where there's like peace it's rather safe. than war. Yeah, it's, it's a very safe, safe place, especially like the, the fruit-based mm -hmm. um, vegans kind of thing. Like whether they're all raw <laughs> or not all raw, it doesn't really matter. Nobody's judging anybody, and it's yeah. just it's just beautiful to just. Um, just be able to just share life together and, and, and allow, like, love, like, yeah. allowing love into your life. Like, for me, like, mm -hmm. self-love, I, I didn't, I thought I had self-love until I realized that I, there was, in many ways, I didn't. Yeah. Like, while I was harming myself with food, that's not an act of self-love, that's no, an act not. of self-harm. Yeah. And there's many other ways, like, um, just in language and conversation, sometimes I would just say things that kind of were hurtful, but mm -hmm. I didn't mean it to be hurtful. Yeah. But I wasn't careful enough about what I was saying. So it was received mm -hmm. without being hurtful. Mm -hmm. um, so I started getting better at like communicating more effectively just through interacting with people more and getting closer to people and just, yeah, and it's just been a beautiful mm -hmm. process of, of just, I feel like I was always me, but, yeah. but before I was me with coping mechanisms and suppressed things and, mm -hmm. and wearing like, walking around <laughs> with cobwebs or layers yeah. protecting me from stuff. Whereas now it's all peeled away and 
and you know, and it's always a constant work in progress. Yeah. But it's all kind of peeled away, and it's like, well, here I am now. Now I can be mm -hmm. myself, my true, authentic self mm -hmm. that I always was, but but it, no one could see it before. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I didn't know how to be that. That's awesome. So mm. that's that's kind of like where the work really was. Yeah. But but yeah, like there's tricks like with food, like eating enough food. You have to. Mm. Um, but when you don't have enough food, well then you feel more emotional, yeah, more vulnerable. That's true too. And that's not always a safe place to be when you're making big changes like a diet. Is diet changes new. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of recognize. Like that's why it's great to go to events like when you're yeah. new to it to like the festivals and mm -hmm. retreats and things. Um, like my Thailand adventure retreat. Yes! Oh my gosh, <laughs> you guys should go! <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, and just because you're in a safe environment where, mm. okay, all the food's prepared for you, yes. some people are sourcing it for you, you don't have to worry about ripening it and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. So um, it just makes things really easy so you can just focus on. Um, yeah, healing growing and growing and, healing, and, yeah, and experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. And, and getting that feeling of community and, and belonging to something as well yeah. is really important. People get that when they go to festivals. They realize mm. they're not, because a lot of people try to do all this at home and they're just alone. Yeah, they're and alone, their partner's isolated. not in it, their family's not in yeah, it. And they're feeling yeah. like disconnecting from everything that they had mm. before and that can be really hard because it's, it's so much easier to to immerse yourself in something you love rather mm -hmm. than to like be leaving things behind that you love. Yes. So focusing yes. on the oh, festival so or the retreat to go so to true. is so much easier than, than going, oh, I'm missing out on this and missing out on that. And you're focusing on the negative so instead of focusing on all the positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. And so group festivals, huge connection huge. and community. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just, what are your favorite foods that you'll eat if you're feeling like you're kind of, you know, if you ever fall back into that state of feeling like, you know, do you have any like things that you're like, all I want to have is like a bunch of mangoes or durian or whatever. Like, do you have... Oh, I mean, I, I love I love any, any fruit that's like in peak season, yeah. like it's grown well, like mm. organic, tree ripened fruit. Um, I'm fortunate to travel around the world a lot mm. and spend a lot of time in Asia and the US here in beautiful Canada now. And so there's, there's times of the year where figs are just Ooh. like impressive and other times persimmons are like blowing my mind. And I'm at like at a, an organic durian farm with old trees oh, with that tree ripen gosh. in Penang, mm -hmm. Malaysia, the Baoxing Durian Farm. I've got the shirt on now. The <laughs> Baoxing Durian Festival shirt. Mm -hmm. um, that farm is like so incredible, like with the quality of fruit. Oh, it's just un I unbelievable. Try it yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like the quality of durians we get at my retreat in Thailand too. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty close, yeah. yeah. But they have like a wider range of varieties there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just stuff like that. Just really, it's it's kind of a game changer when you're getting satisfying fruit. Yeah. Um, but I can also be very happy just eating terrible quality bananas in Australia during like a winter or something like that. Yeah. Um, mixed with other foods, like. But I just, I just always make the best decision, like. Like when I go to a market, I never know what I'm going to get, right? And I, yeah, sometimes true. there's not ripe fruit there. What you what you were hoping for isn't available. It's just gone out of season, and and so I just make the best decision I can with food. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not so awesome. And yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> but but I, I'm always happy because I know I've made the best decision that I could on the day with getting the best food that I could, and mm -hmm. and that's and I'm I'm happy about that. And you know, at, at the end of the day, it's it's about so much more than food. But yeah. But if food but food can like just stop you in your tracks if you haven't got control of that. Yeah, you that's can, so It can true. rule your world if you're like experiencing all the addictive kind of feelings. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give somebody who's dealing with these emotional addictions yeah. with cooked food or junk food or whatever right. um, and dealing with their the emotions behind the addiction or kind of pinpointing what right. the connection is? Yeah. So what I'll say is like you, you can use discipline, willpower and strictness and mm -hmm. stuff for a short term to, yeah. to, um, you know, to get you through things and, and like eating maybe overeating or eating treats, um, <laughs> eating bad food combinations, like just, just, I mean, it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. Like to help you get through um, some tough times, mm -hmm. but just do the best you can and, and, and be forgiving of yourself. Yeah. But keep in mind that long term, if you want to succeed, you have to be doing something because you truly love that and you truly mm -hmm. value doing that and you value the results. And so you have to, you know, gain some knowledge about yeah. like what are the benefits and what, what and you got to remember what was I suffering that, that I'm not yeah. suffering anymore because people often forget like they start eating better yeah. and getting healthier getting fitter and um, getting connected more connected and more loving and compassionate and they forget how things used to be yeah so they think oh, I can just eat this and yeah. not be um, you know but it spirals for a lot of people with food addiction 
And so just, just keeping a, a reference of, like, of, of, how, of, of what, how far you've come, mm -hmm. which you can do by like, taking notes, like journaling, like yeah. you like to journal journaling, and, and stuff, yeah. like, that's really powerful, like, mm -hmm. like writing stuff down. I used to write a, all the stuff down too. Um, not so much these days. I don't really feel like I, I, I need to so much. Yeah. But um, it would still be they beneficial to way. do. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like when I was water faster, I wrote down everything um, yeah. that I came up like that was in my head. Mm -hmm. I had to kind of write things down to go back to sleep at night. And, um, and I didn't read the, those journal, that journaling until two years later. Oh, wow. But everything that I wrote down that was about change, I had done wow. in those two years mm -hmm. without, without reading the list. I'd made oh, all those powerful. changes in my life. So that yeah. was it's really, so writing, really yeah, amazing. It's a good yeah. one too. But yeah, so much information. Thank you, Grant. So much for this little interview and sharing your stuff with us. Um, tell us or tell uh, everyone watching where they can find you and a little bit about your cool retreat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can find me at rawaussieathlete.com, which is R A W A U S S I E A T H L E T E. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on YouTube, Raw Aussie Athlete, and Instagram, and all, all that stuff. You can go to my website and you can see yeah, all the all links. You go to the contact page, yeah. you can link to everything. And um, yeah, my retreats in Thailand, I've been running for um, for eight years now. Um, and I, and <clears throat> most years I've run more than one retreat per year. So I think I've run it like 11, 12 wow. times or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a two week retreat, and there's two of them back to back. So. Half, at least half the of the people, <laughs> at least half of the people each year come to the whole four weeks, <clears throat> because once you're in Thailand, people don't want to leave, and it's, <laughs> it's like by the time you you know travel, fly there, it's cheaper to stay there than to go home. Yeah. Um, the retreats aren't expensive. You can see the prices on my website, mm -hmm. um, and that yeah, the, like you can go to other events that are double the price, like for the, yeah. for the and the quality, like we we um, the fruits are impressive. It's like mm -hmm. peak fruit season. There's there's the durian is, is amazing. We're getting from old trees that have, taste better than, than younger trees. They, they have deeper flavors. Um, we're getting like fresh tree drop durian rather than cut mm. durian that doesn't taste as good. And you were telling me that you can just go and pick the fruit right Yeah, we'll ready go to, we'll and go to eat fruit it. orchards, organic fruit orchards, mm -hmm. like where you can climb mangosteen trees and just pick fruit like mangosteens or rambutans or uh, oh, various yeah. long, longans and long kongs um, and, and eat those straight from the tree. Wow. Mm. Um, I've actually like bitten into some of those fruits like just straight through like on, without picking it. Without like, picking it. <laughs> You're like hand. way too impatient. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Um, That's awesome. It's just, it's just nice to be able to kind of play with these things. And yeah, yeah and we go on uh, exciting adventures each day mm. to beautiful waterfalls, um, national parks with wild elephants and we go to beaches with monkeys and... and um, oh, you were telling me about the old... Uh, Abandoned temple. Oh, the abandoned oh, temple. Yeah, that's that's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a meditation at the top last year, oh which is really beautiful to take that time and space. And there's nobody else there because nobody else knows this temple exists. It's been abandoned yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. So we get. I just. I know all the places in Chant in the in Chant the province of Chanterbury in Thailand. See, Thailand grows 50% of the world's durian. Wow. And 25% of the world's durian, or half of Thailand's durian, wow. is grown in the one that one province oh, of Chanterbury. Wow. So. We go to the world's biggest durian market, and there's literally there's like there must be hundreds of thousands of durian in this market. Oh my gosh! And they're all in baskets, all and it's it's like it's a whole level you just can't even imagine the fruit. There's yeah. trucks just driving past the highways all the time, full of durians, and oh the abundance is amazing. Mm -hmm. Thailand is like a fruit culture, so to be in that is is really special. Mm -hmm. But to be in you know, immersed in everybody's experience, everybody else's yeah. company, 20 people uh, for two weeks or four weeks is really special too. We have daily talks mm -hmm. about meaningful topics um, from health and fitness through to, mm -hmm. to just um, um, personal development and emotional growth and like what are your fears and doubts yeah. and, and just it's just it's such a supportive um, space. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a raw vegan chef, um, it's often Alicia Ojeda oh, who's yes. from Woodstock Fruit Festival. She was, and yeah she was at the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So She's like, awesome. The best 801010 chef so. in the world by mm -hmm. many people's um, judgments yeah she's good she's and good she's really good and so um so we have yeah awesome dinners prepared and uh, we don't have dehydrators we keep the food like simple but yeah. but we have like delicious dressings really good. and salads yeah, totally. and, and all that stuff so it's not just all fruit um but it's all 100 percent raw vegan um 100 supportive mm -hmm. and just a beautiful environment to thrive in and so you get to get this taste of what it's like how good life can be 
Mm -hmm. um, and the hope is that people take that home with them and, and, and fit it into their own home environment. Yeah. Totally. make it happen so. well thank you for putting that on you guys want to go right <laughs> so you can go to his website it's gonna be right here <laughs> and but yeah thank you so much again for doing our little interview and we're gonna get ready to write the schedule for <laughs> yeah, yeah do, the, do the schedule for so the, for the Canada Fruit for Fest, the Canada Fruit Fest. <laughs> so excited I know me too so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please click like and subscribe to my channel to get notifications for more you can click the little bell you can follow uh, Grant at Raw Aussie Athlete as well you can find me on Facebook Lissa's Raw Food Romance on Instagram at Raw Food Romance and on Snapchat Lissa Raw Vegan so until the next video guys Fruit on! See you guys later. <laughs>